Hello. In this uh, very short session, we'll try to finish survival uh, models. We'll uh, wrap it up by looking at a new uh, notation uh, uh, for uh, this session. But just a quick review of what we were doing last time. Remember, we looked at TPX. And TPX simply, this is time zero. Somebody survived to age X. And then also that person, what's the probability for a person who survived to X also to survives to X plus T? Right, so uh, I usually use this notation, right? So this is for a life, remaining lifetime of a person that is uh, that has reached the age of X to survive to X, uh, to X plus T, right? So another, the opposite of that one is like an individual at time X, so the individual reach the age X, so survive to age X, the condition is that he or she survived to age X and then die within T years from X. So the death occurs between X and X plus T. And when I shade an area, it, it uh, refers to death. Now a new little notation, extra new notation. I have it uh, a picture here so printed out so you will not make a mistake of uh, my handwriting but also you can review the textbook. Let's look at this notation. It's a QX so it's mortality. QX and we call it deferred mortality and I'll tell you why. So probability or probability of deferred mortality. And the deferred or deferral uh, period, this n, this n is like deferred by n years, deferred by n. Right. So it's the m -X m q x is the old mortality probability, but the new notation we add n is to say we deferred it. So if we it, try to look at the same logic here, so now this is zero, this is h x. So the individual already survived to age X. So we are here. The, it's given that the individual survived to X. So what's the probability that the individual, we will defer it to X plus N, right? So the deferral, we defer it to X plus N, and the individual will die between X plus N and X plus N plus M. So the death occurs here. Uh, this n is simply it's a deferred period so the mortality will be deferred to uh, uh, by n so then the death will be not between x and uh, between x and x and m but x uh, between x uh, and n and x and m right so this is the deferred so this is like the deferral period n deferral the deferred term or it's a deferred period, right? It's very important in actuarial science to visualize the concept. Uh, trying to memorize, uh, trying to memorize many times the formula becomes confusing with uh, so many notation. Uh, the most important thing is to be able to visualize it and then you implement it. Why I'm saying this? Because now it becomes a simple probability uh, uh, calculation if without annotation. But let's write it here. N, M, Q X this one now let's calculate the probability remember we are here so the individual already survived to age X right so the individual it's given to us that the individual survived to age X so we know that the in the denominator is s of X right because the individual already survived X the condition is given right but what goes here is death occurs between here and here so it's simply is like the death occurs here between here and here, right? So what we need to do is the individual survive to S X plus N, right? And we subtract from it survival X plus N plus M, right? Do you see it? Does that make sense? Right. This is one way to calculate it. And usually this is the most straightforward way, but you can also cal write this one as well in different way. Remember what's S of, let's look at 10 by 10. Let's look at this term. What is S plus X, uh, S uh, like the survival function to X plus N over the survival function over uh, X? 
this is the simple old TP uh, sorry instead of T we have N now N P X right right this is the first term what about the second term now this one minus same one is px because the denominator sorry let me use the same color the denom denominator is uh, s of x so this minus px but instead of uh, having n now you have n plus m n plus m right so survival but and why we oh sorry i need to write it again so this is s x plus m m so simply you taking off this one you subtract from it this one right but because we are at time x you need to divide it by s of x right there is another way as well there is another way to calculate it also it's good to know always conceptual understanding like being able to capture what you wanted to do from the graph you first illustrate it and then you uh, use the formula that makes sense to you so now we can also look at it from the graph now you are here so what's the probability of death occurs here if you are here well firstly I need to uh, I need to survive to here and then I, I so I move everything to here instead of here and then having death here so this you can write it is NPX right so I survived the deferred period n and then multiplied by q so death occurs here right n plus but now we are not at the x we are at x plus n x plus n and the death happens in the m period right right so those are the three ways i mean this is logical you take you survive to age x plus n and the death happens now you survive the uh, n plus x so you are there then this is the joint probability that then you the death happens at age m and th they are all of them the same you know you can use the one that makes you comfortable right and sometimes it's the question itself helps you to uh, to look at at it in uh, in different way right does that make sense let's take one example The example is, let's take just as always, let's use uniform, just like to simplify it a little bit later on. Maybe not now when we take uh, discrete distribution, we take many questions like uh, this as well. Because usually this uh, uh, easier to see this concept with discrete distribution. But let's take S of X is given to us to be 100 minus X divided by 100. So we know it's uh, uniform distributions, X between 0 and 100 right so we know that this is uniform uh, distribution right so now the question is asking us to find 6 10 so 6 10 the deferred period is 10 of q 64 same thing here our n is 6 our m is 10 and our x is 64 again i wanted maybe i should write it one more time make sure that 6 then q64 and this is like a deferred period by six years important as i mentioned always question like this like usually the n and m become become uh, confusing you know so the best thing is to draw a line so we have zero so now we are at not at zero we are at 64 right here and the deferred period here is six years so become 70 and this is the deferred period and then happens in the next 10 years 80. if you visualize it it becomes straightforward there is nothing complicated about it let's take the first method so 6 10 q64 is simple we are at this time so we need to have s of 64 
and then we have s of 70 minus s of 80 right simple nothing much s of 70 you plug in here 100 minus 70 divided by 100 it's given to us s of x minus 100 minus 80 divided by 100 and everything is here divided 100 by 64 divided by 100 the 100 is the cross out so here we have 30 minus 20 is 10 divided what's left here is 36 right this is one uh, method let's take the other method the other method is 6 deferred uh, like the deferred period 6 and this occurs uh, within 10 years and the year starting is 64 Re same logic here you have 0 64 now you have 70 and then 80 death happens here right same logic uh, we can write 6 defer to 10 q64 is you can do like p64 use uh, like you calculate this surviving here minus surviving here right and this 64 is delayed by uh, sorry it's like surviving six years so 70 minus now surviving here if the base is here it becomes you survive 16 years p 64 right right same logic so now we like to solve this one you need to have what uh, we need to have tpx what's the function of tp 64 remember what we said tp uh, if uniform if uh, the x is uniformly distributed then the remaining lifetime is also uniformly distributed but instead of uh, uniformly distributed over uh, the whole uh, omega it becomes omega minus x our x is 64 so we have 100 minus 64 minus t over 100 minus 64 so it becomes 36 minus t over 36 this is your tp 64 so then 6 10 q 64 it becomes uh this one which is 36 minus oh sorry uh, yeah uh, let's let me write it again let me write it again 6 p 64 minus 16 p 64 we have tp 64 so this one we block in 630 over 36 minus 20 over 36 everything is divided oh sorry we don't need to divide here there is no right, 36 right and this becomes 10 over 36 should be the same answer unless i make a mistake right it should be the same answer right 10 over 36 let's take the other way as well just to to make sure that we understand the different way so the same one 6 10 q 64 now we're going to use the third one right this one right so again because you forget i don't recommend anyone to remember what's n what's n what's what's m it's visualize it visualizing it it will help you to not to make a mistake so you have zero you have 64 then you deferred it by 6 becomes 70 and then 80 this is how i read it i don't remember what's n what's m it's confusing it becomes confusing it's good to know of course but visualizing it will help you to not to make mistake so now this 6 10 sorry 6 10 q 64 this one can be written you are here so you need to shift it to 70 so we say we need to survive 6p64 and then multiply it by q now you shift it to 70 and you uh ten, within 10 years this one 6p uh, p64 we already computed it right 
30 over 36. We, I mean, it's so easy. You don't need to, uh, I mean, you can quickly uh, remember. Let me write it here. It's um, this one, uh, TP64. Just it's good to remember is equal to 36, 36 minus T. And this one then becomes here, becomes 36 minus 6 divided by 36. Now everything is multiplied, right? Do we see it? Everything we need to multiply it by 10 Q, uh, uh, Q, Q70. Let's take it on the side, this one. 10 Q70. This is F T of T for now this is 70 the age is 70 here right for t of 70 but t of 70 and this is the cumulative distributed distribution function again you need to remember if you know if x is uniformly distributed then the remaining lifetime is uniformly distributed so the remaining uh, lifetime it's between 0 and 30 so remaining uh, 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 like rem t of x is t of x just remember is uniform now between 0 and 30 right because the remaining lifetime and this is again omega minus x right so what is then this one it becomes so easy because the uh, cumulative distribution function you remember you need to memorize all of those it becomes t over 30 which is 10 over 30 Right, so um, so ten. Let's see, it's the same color. Ten over thirty, and then this cross out with this thirty-six minus six thirty, and what you are left with is ten over thirty-six. So all of them they take you to the same answer. So again, there are several ways to do the same thing. And sometimes a question guide you to which method to use based on the information available to you. We'll take other examples when we look at discrete distribution. With this, we finish. Oh, maybe I should mention another one. I, um, uh, we, I talked about it before. Now, you have this is, you have, remember when I said you have TQX, we know what it is. What if it's written QX? This we understand it to be one q x right so we don't need to write the one if it's not written it's not written same logic if you have n m or oh, let me take yeah maybe i'll take i'll add the picture again just to remind you how it looks like Now you have this one. What if it's written in a Q? Oh, sorry. It's written instead of this, it's written in this and QX. There's nothing, there is no M here. You don't see M. It means this one, it means N one QX. So if the one is dropped, it means uh, it, mean, uh, it goes without saying. It's in actuarial math, you can the one. Uh, not show it here so it can be it's written just like this right i think with this we finish this uh, survival models uh, we have a few lessons on survival models what i will do now i will post your uh, uh, i'll post the assignment uh, quite uh, i will put uh, quite uh, maybe six seven questions or a little bit more so the more questions you do the better you will be prepared so I'll pause the assignment with the solution. Is the idea is to train yourself. Don't look at the solutions. Try to solve it. Uh, try to solve each problem yourself. If you f uh, fail to get it right, just then you can look at the solutions. But you should be able to uh, to do those problems. If you and then you compare after you solve it, you compare your results with what uh, uh, with the results with with the solutions I provide you. All right. Again, actuarial sense. You need to do as much questions as you can to improve your learning. All right.